Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with Cape Falcon Kayak, and today I want to talk about how to modify an F1 kayak frame. Now the F1 is available in six different sizes to really closely match the volume of the kayak to the weight of the paddler. And there's also different changes that can be made to the framing to adjust for the ergonomics of the individual user. But there's also changes that can be made to really optimize this kayak for surf performance or for touring performance or to make it a little bit lighter or to make it a little bit shorter. And you can mix and match any of those framing elements to really personalize the F1 to your individual kayaking needs. So I've got this really cool half scale F1 model here that I can use to illustrate all the different things I want to talk about. And the first thing I want to talk about is just how I size this kayak for various size users. Now, how I change the volume of an F1 is I increase the width in this area and I can also increase the location of the spreader forms towards the end of the gunnels. And I can increase or decrease the length of the ribs to make the kayak shallower or deeper for different size users. Now I can also make the kayak a little bit longer or a little bit shorter, but I tend not to mess with the length of the kayak too much because that really changes the performance. Now, if you're looking at a set of F1 plans, you're going to notice that there are six different cut lists for different size F1s. And those include small changes to the length of the various materials and also changes to the dimensions of the materials as well. And I do that so I can keep things as strong as they need to be for the various size paddlers, but also as light as they possibly can be to really keep these boats as light as possible. And one thing that's important to remember is that once you've identified the correct size cut list for the boat size you're building, I would recommend just actually physically taking the other cut lists and setting them out of the way so you don't accidentally pick up the wrong one and make some mistakes. So while the width, the length, the depth, and the dimensions of the scantlings all change for each different size F1, one thing that remains universal is the layout of the deck beams and the ribs along the gunnels. And I do this because having a universal layout makes the plans a lot easier to use. But the only caveat to that is that I do change where that layout is referenced from for the different size paddlers. And this is a really important point, so I just want to illustrate what I'm talking about a little more carefully. I've got an F1 gunnel here, a small one, just to match the small one right here. And I've got a tape measure. And if you were looking at a set of F1 plans, you would notice that there's a little table that shows you where to reference your tape measure from for the different length of gunnels for the different sizes and different flavors of F1s. So for instance, a shorter F1, you would measure from a certain distance beyond the end of the gunnel, and that's where you would take all the measurements from. For a mid-size F1, you would measure from the end of the gunnel, and for a larger size F1, you might measure a little further back along the gunnel. Now something I want to mention really quick, because it's something that people get confused about, is why there is no specific location listed for deck beam number three. I have locations listed for deck beams one, two, four, five, and six, but the reason there's no location for deck beam number three is because it moves forward or back depending on the inside dimension of the combing that you would build, which relates to the length of your legs. Paddlers with longer legs need longer inside lengths on their combings. Paddlers with shorter legs need shorter inside lengths. So before you do your layout for your deck, you want to build your combing first. And then once you've laid out all the other places for the deck beams, you're going to basically take the inside dimension of your combing, subtract one quarter inch minimum, maybe three eighths of an inch from that dimension. And you're going to measure forward from the front edge of deck beam number four. And that length will define the back edge of deck beam number three. Hopefully that makes sense. So now that we've talked about sizing, let's get into the fun stuff and really talk about how to modify this framework to really personalize the kayak. Now, before I talk about that, I just want to mention that the standard format F1 is already a really versatile kayak. It's a fairly short kayak, it's a lightweight kayak, it paddles really well, it tours fairly well, and it surfs really well. So the only time you'd want to make any of these modifications is if you're interested in really biasing the performance in a specific direction. Now, in addition to the standard version of the F1, I have four different versions listed in the plans. There's an ultralight version, there's a shorter version, there's a touring specific version, and then there's also a surf specific version of this boat. And 
Each of those modifications is going to give you slight advantages in certain areas and it's also going to have some compromises as well. And as I go through this, I'll talk about those advantages and also some of the trade-offs. Now the first variation I want to talk about because I think it's going to be of the most interest to the most people is how to make an ultralight F1. Now the F1 as it's currently framed has about a 10 year, 10,000 mile lifespan and the skin has about a 5 year, 5,000 mile lifespan which means that you usually need to reskin the frame one time over the course of the life of the frame. Now, what if you're a person for whom every pound counts? I know a lot of my customers and students are older people or people like myself with a lot of injuries that really need to get the boat as light as possible. Well, in this case, there's changes that you can make to the framing that can reduce the weight by almost a full five or six pounds. And the compromise for that is that you just don't have quite the same longevity in the frame. So for instance, if I'm building an ultralight F1, I'm thinning down all of the framing members I'm usually making the kayak a little bit less volume overall and I'm also making the kayak a little bit shorter and I'm putting a lighter weight skin on it. And all of these things together, you know, will change this from being a 30 pound kayak down to being almost a 25 pound kayak or even lighter if you're building one of the smaller size F1s. And for me, that's a good compromise because I feel like if I have to reskin a boat anyways, I might as well just make a new frame and have an all new boat. And usually when the kayaks are starting to get kind of worn out with the skin after about five years, they still float and they still paddle fine anyways. They're just looking kind of ratty. And so I'll oftentimes just set that boat aside and have it be a spare boat for a friend to paddle, or I'll just give it away to somebody who needs a kayak. So for me, the ultralight version is a good set of compromises, but not necessarily for everybody. So the next variation I want to talk about is something that I'm calling the stubby version of the F1. Now the stubby version of the F1 takes three inches off the bow of any of the different sizes of the F1 kayak with the exception of the smallest size which is already as small as it can get. And then it changes the angle of the bow stem from a 45 degree angle bow stem to a 31 degree angle bow stem. And that allows the water line to stay exactly the same length but shortens the length of the kayak on deck. Now when would you want to make this modification? Now the original reason that I have this deck that the length that it is is because I liked having enough room to put a full length spare Greenland paddle and have it fit comfortably on deck. But having said that, I also really like the idea of the shortest possible kayak and the lightest possible kayak, even if it's just a tiny bit. And those are just my personal tastes in a kayak. So for me, it makes sense to make the deck a little bit shorter and just have my spare paddle be a little bit shorter as well. And for most people, I think this is honestly just going to be an aesthetic decision. Or maybe you're somebody that has a very short space in which to store your kayak. That could actually be a factor as well. And if you want to see how that looks, the demo boat that's at the front of the F1 in detail video is actually a stubby version F1. So you can kind of look at the bow detail of that compared to the bow detail on the plants. So the next version I want to talk about is something that I call the touring version of the F1 which is really nothing more than just making a slightly curved deck beam at the back of the cockpit to give you a little bit better access to the cargo space under the back deck. Now, this is a modification I would only make if I was doing a lot of camping out of an F1. Otherwise, it just kind of complicates the framework and makes the kayak harder to build. Now, when you're doing this, you can do one of two things. You can either make this deck beam out of a block of hardwood and it would look something like this. And that's nice because it's a little bit easier to land the aft deck stringers onto the flat surface from the sawn out piece. Or you could do something like this where you laminate a very shallow curve that's thicker than the ones that you would have at the front of the F1. And in that case, you'd have to kind of work these deck stringers back here into this area with a chisel really carefully and also flatten off the top of this a little bit more to give some surface for the combing to land on. Now if you decide to make this modification, something to be aware of is that you have to take your completely finished combing and put it into a steam box and then take it out and bend it into a secondary curve front to back. And what that does is it allows the combing to kind of nestle down nicely in between these two curved deck beams right here, gives it kind of a nice pretty shape and also keeps it a little bit lower so it doesn't bump into your elbows. So the last variation of the F1 and the one I want to spend the most time on is the surf specific version of the F1. 
Now, this version of the F1 is really special because it goes back to a lot of the original measurements that I took off of the Mariner coaster when I was first designing the F1. And the reason that it evolved away from that over time is because I found that just by making slight changes, I was able to really improve the overall paddling performance of this kayak while changing the surf performance very little. Now, Having said that, if you're someone who spends a lot of time at the ocean, a lot of time surfing ocean waves, you might want to go back to that original variation of the F1 just because it really is optimized for just the best possible downwave performance and the general paddling trade-offs there aren't really that big of a deal. So if you're someone who just goes to the ocean once in a while, I wouldn't worry about this. If you're someone who's really passionate about ocean wave surfing, definitely make these modifications. All right. So the modifications for an F1 surf are the kayak gets about six inches shorter in the bow, although everything else stays proportionally the same. And the stem angle in the bow changes from 45 to 31 degrees, just like in the stubby version of the F1. I also decrease the bow rocker, or I guess you would say increase the bow rocker in the front here by a quarter to a half of an inch. And I've got that shown in the surf plans as well. And in this area here, something that is common to all F1s but is absolutely imperative for a surf specific version is that these four ribs are very, very V-shaped because if those bulge out at all, what they're gonna do is they're gonna project this chine here into the wave face and that's gonna cause you to broach up over the lip of the wave when you would rather be releasing and continuing to head down wave. And that makes a big difference on really fast, steep waves. Another change on the F1 Surf is I recommend that people choose a shorter cockpit by one size than they normally would. So generally your cockpit size is keyed off of your leg length so you can raise your legs easily while you're paddling. And in the Surf version, I recommend that people build a shorter cockpit so they can really project their knees forward into the skin on either side of the combing. And that really helps lock you into the kayak even better. Now, if you really like the idea of being able to raise your legs while you're paddling, you might not want to make this modification. It's something that can really go one way or the other. The other thing I do is I shift the paddler position right here back by about a half inch to an inch, depending on the specific variation of the boat while the rest of the framing stays the same. And then finally, in the stern of the boat here, I take extra care to really pull these chines up even farther. Now, something that you'll notice that's kind of a hallmark of all of my designs is the chines of the boat in the stern get forced up really, really far. And you know, if you're actually building one of these, it gets kind of scary because you can hear these things start to groan and almost make cracking noises but they really do need to be pulled up that hard to bring that planing surface up and out of the water because when you're surfing down a wave face, you need to make sure that the tail of your kayak is biting in really, really hard and the bow of your kayak is popping up out of the water because otherwise the bow of the kayak is gonna take control and it's gonna start to steer you on a wave. So what you can do is when you're building the surf version of the F1, you really take extra care to pull these chines up as far as you can and something that you can do, and this is not mandatory, it's optional, is you can add a double keel in this back four rib section here. So when I'd be finished ribbing the kayak, what I would do is trim the ends of the last four ribs. So those ribs go upwards by about a half inch. And then I add a half inch tall secondary keel and lash it on and then lash my normal keel on in that area. And what that does is that gives you a little bit more room for your skin to be able to bridge between the keel up to the chine without contacting the ribs. And it just helps you get the shaping in that area. So all these things kind of work together to give you a kayak that's going to perform noticeably better on an ocean wave. So those are the variations of the F1 that I have listed on the website, but I feel like that just scratches the surface as far as what's possible in building in skin on frame. Now, the thing that got me excited about skin on frame building in the first place and the thing that keeps me excited about it is just how easy it is to modify these boats compared to almost any other boat building system. And I feel like that combined with the lower cost and the speed of building skin on frame really makes this into an ideal medium for prototyping and experimentation. 
Now, that's also a double-edged sword because if you're just getting started in skin on frame, yes, you can make kayaks quickly and easily, but you might not know what you need to do to get the performance that you're looking for. And that's why I've created the plans and the video courses and all of these different variations. So people that are just getting started out can really get a quick, good, comprehensive skin on frame education and also get themselves into a tested, good kayak on their very first build instead of having to build kayak after kayak after kayak and slowly working your way towards the performance you're looking for. All right, I think that's all I have to say about modifying an F1 kayak for right now. If you're watching this on YouTube, thanks for watching. Consider hitting that like and subscribe button and maybe head over to the Cape Falcon Kayak website, see what I got going on there. If you're watching this on the website and you're building your own F1, good luck building your kayak, have fun, and be safe on the water.